To recap the series, in part one, I presented my particular motto of God. Then, in part two, I presented a case for why the intrinsic probability of theism is higher than that of naturalism. In part three, I presented a cumulative argument that shows how theism, in many respects, has more explanatory power than naturalism. And in my last video of this series, I responded in detail to the problem of evil and the problem of divine hiddenness, which are considered to be the two most important objections to the theistic hypothesis. In this video, I plan to do something a little bit different. Ever since I began this series, my views have changed on the topics of metaphysics and probability theory. Given this, the structure of my case for theism will look different than my previous videos. But this will, of course, provide me the opportunity to build upon what I have said before in my previous videos. With that in mind, let's begin. Is the existence of God more plausible than not? This question is central to theism. How confident are we to be that this proposition is true? A plausible answer to our confidence that God exists ought to be equal to the probability of that proposition, given our evidence. This leaves us with two further questions, which is, what is our evidence? And how is the probability of a proposition given some evidence determined? I will begin by focusing on the second of these two questions. When I am speaking about probability, I am speaking about epistemic probability. The epistemic probability of A given B is a relation between the propositions B and A. It is the degree to which B supports A or makes A plausible. The structure of epistemic probability asks us what the relationship between the probabilities are. There can be two types of probability. The first type of probability is a non-basic probability, and the second type is a basic probability. Non-basic probabilities are the probabilities that are determined by the values of other probabilities. A basic probability, on the other hand, are the elementary quantities out of which other probabilities are built. They are the starting point of probability theory. Given certain basic probabilities, we can compute the values of all non-basic probabilities. One can also talk about the distinction between conditional and unconditional probabilities. A conditional probability is the likelihood of an event or outcome occurring based on the occurrence of a previous event or outcome. And an unconditional probability is the probability of something without any background context. So the structural project asks, what probabilities are basic? And the substantive project asks, how are the values of these basic probabilities determined? Although these questions are both metaphysical, they are interesting mainly because of their epistemological preferences. We want to be able to figure out how probable, given our evidence, makes the hypothesis that God exists. The structural and substantive projects aid us in this to the extent that they help us figure out the values of basic probabilities and then compute the values of non-basic probabilities as a function of those. When debating the existence of God, philosophers who have addressed the question of how we might figure out the value of this proposition have mainly focused on the substantive project, jumping straight to arguing for or against substantive methods. 
However, epistemic structure is prior to epistemic substance. If one structure of epistemic probability is problematic, then everything else in the probability values are problematic. So we must start off with the structural question. My view of epistemic probability is called Bayesian explanationism. Informally, explanationism says that basic probabilities are the probabilities of atomic propositions conditional on potential direct explanations of those propositions. The alternative to this is the orthodox view of Bayesianism, which says that basic probabilities are the unconditional probabilities of complete worlds. This is important since many people in the philosophy religion assume an orthodox view of epistemic probability. So to understand the views, we can talk about propositions as state descriptions. State descriptions are maximally complete descriptions of the world. They answer all our questions, assign all values to our variables. But determining what are the basic probabilities themselves is the main difference between the orthodox and the explanationist orthodoxy focuses on the partition of state descriptions, in this case, u1 and b, u1 and w, u2 and b, u2 and w. On this view, the basic probabilities are the unconditional probabilities of state descriptions, p u1 and b, p u1 and w, p u2 and b, and p u2 and w. This answer to the structural question takes its cue from orthodox mathematical treatments of probability, in which the probabilities of state descriptions are assigned first, and other probabilities are determined as a function of these. Since orthodox probability theory assigns unconditional probabilities directly to each state description, it treats the unconditional probabilities of state descriptions as basic. Thus, basic probabilities are just all unconditional probabilities. Explanationism takes a different route. According to explanationism, basic probabilities are the probabilities of atomic propositions conditional on propositions directly explanatorily prior to them. Because u1, u2 is directly prior to b, w, and nothing is prior to u1, u2, we have here six basic probabilities, pu1, pu2, pb conditional on u1, pw conditional on u1, pb conditional on u2, and pw conditional on u2. In the orthodox system, only the first two would be basic, but in explanationism, all six are basic. According to explanationism, the first step in determining the values of probabilities is to order the variables slash partitions by their explanatory priority. So explanationism would say that all prior probabilities are determined by higher order theories. With this in mind, there are arguments for explanationism I want to bring up as I know many people will disagree with this view. First is that orthodoxy about a kind of probability may look initially appealing partially because it offers to reduce conditional probabilities to unconditional probabilities. Epistemic probability, though, is a relation between propositions, the degree to which one proposition makes another plausible. This means that all epistemic probabilities are conditional, because only conditional probabilities have two connections where one proposition makes another likely. The unconditional epistemic probability of a state description is really the state description's probability conditional only on a priori truths, the degree to which a priori truths make that state description plausible. On the epistemic interpretation of probability, then, orthodoxy becomes less motivated. It becomes unclear why we should think that the probabilities that orthodoxy identifies as basic are basic. If these conditional probabilities can be basic, why must other conditional probabilities be defined in terms of them? What is special about the orthodox basic probabilities? By contrast, explanationism can give a principled explanation of why, say, PB conditional on U1 is basic. It is basic because U1 directly gives a probability to B in virtue of the urn variable being the sole variable influencing B's truth. U1, which says that the urn contains one black and two white balls, directly makes B plausible to degree 1-3 because of the role it plays in explaining the truth or falsity of B. This fits well with a conception of epistemic probability as measuring a quantity, namely plausibility, that U1 confers on B. The probabilistic philosopher Nevin Kleiman Haga identifies many other problems for orthodox Bayesianism. The reasons he has I've mentioned already, but others include 1. Conditional probabilities of atomic propositions may be well defined when associated unconditional state description probabilities are not. 2. The probabilities explanationism identifies as basic can be more directly perceived than those orthodoxy identifies as basic 3. Explanationism better models actual probabilistic reasoning. 4. Explanationism combines more easily with a probabilistic calculus for causal interventions. His most important reason, however, is that substantive methods for determining the values of basic probabilities get the wrong result if applied to orthodox basic probabilities. He says, quote, 
Recall that the task of determining the values of epistemic probabilities has two parts. We have been exploring the structural part, which asks which probabilities are basic and which are non-basic. The substantive part involves assigning values to the basic probabilities. Substantive methods will have different implications if applied to different, allegedly basic, probabilities. My argument is conditional. If maximum entropy or simplicity are the correct criteria of basic probability, they get the right result only if combined with explanationism. I argue, moreover, that the basic problematic phenomenon I identify, the addition of explanatorily posterior variables affecting the probability of explanatorily prior variables, will take place with any method that assigns probabilities directly to state descriptions. The principle of indifference says that we should assign equal probability to a space of alternatives if our knowledge does not favor any of these alternatives over any other. The maximum entropy principle generalizes this by telling us to assign probabilities that are as close to equal as is consistent with our knowledge. Orthodox probabilists like Williamson would have us apply max entropy to the set of all possible state descriptions. On Williamson's version of objective Bayesianism, the probabilities of the atomic states, i.e. state descriptions, are basic. All other probabilities can be defined in terms of them. According to Williamson, when one has no information favoring one state description over another, one should assign equal probabilities to all of them. If one does have information favoring one state description over another, one should assign probabilities as close to equal as is consistent with one's information. I will now argue that applying maxent to state descriptions in this way leads to absurd results. Suppose I tell you that I have an urn in front of me that contains one black ball and one white ball. If I sample from the urn only once and we apply the principle of indifference to the partition B1, W1, we get the result that PB1 equals PW1 equals 1, 2. But now suppose that I tell you that I am going to sample from the urn twice and that the outcome of the first draw will influence the outcome of the second one. In particular, if I draw the black ball the first time, I will set it aside and so be ensured to draw the white ball the second time. If I draw the white ball the first time, I will set it aside, but also add a green ball to the urn. Now we have two partitions, B1, W1, B2, W2, G2. This gives us six state descriptions, B1 and B2, B1 and W2, B1 and G2, W1 and B2, W1 and W2, W1 and GD2. Your background knowledge that B1, W2, and W1, B2, V, G2, allows you to eliminate the first, third, and fifth outcomes, leaving you with B1 and W2, W1 and B2, W1 and G2. If you apply the principle of indifference to those state descriptions not excluded by your knowledge, they each get 103 probability. This implies that before either draw has been made, PB1 equals 1, 3, and PW1 equals 2, 3. So, without giving you any new knowledge about how I make the first draw, and without telling you about any actual, as opposed to merely possible, effects of that draw, I've made it more initially likely for you that the first draw is white. This is the intuitively wrong result. The outcome of the first draw is determined prior to the outcome of the second. B1 and W1 should both be assigned unconditional probability 1 and 2, and B2 and G2 should each be assigned equal probability conditional on B1. This gives probabilities of 1 and 2 on extra 4 and 104 to our state descriptions. The basic point that Nevins is making is that explanationism takes into account the fact the first draw is determined prior to the outcome of the second. And so our background knowledge would impact the final probability of the outcome. I will discuss more about background knowledge later in regards to theism. Another example that Nevins brings up is the following. Suppose that we know that either one male or one male and one female bird of the same species flew to an island off the coast of the Americas two generations ago. We further know that each pair of male-female birds has five male and five female children in a generation. Then the total number of birds in all generations under the second hypothesis is 2 plus 10 plus 50 equals 62. Since, on the first hypothesis, the bird has no mate with which to reproduce, the total number of birds given the first hypothesis is 1. If we read quantitative parsimony as attaching to the total number of entities to which we are committed in our overall worldview, then the two-bird hypothesis is much less simple than the one-bird hypothesis. It posits 62 times as many birds. Intuitively, however, the two-bird hypothesis is only slightly less simple than the one-bird hypothesis inasmuch as it posits only one more, comparatively, fundamental entities, birds. And as with the adding a green ball to the urn example above, 
Comparing the simplicity of state descriptions would lead to the implausible conclusion that learning that one more generation has gone by should lower the relative probability of the two-bird hypothesis. It seems, then, that if we want to give preference to simpler hypotheses, we should compare the simplicities of atomic hypotheses on the same level of explanation and not the simplicities of overall worldviews. So explanationism is the better view of Bayesianism to take than orthodoxy. Now some may be wondering why this is relevant. While most philosophers of religion assume an orthodox view of Bayesianism, and this impacts the way that they do the comparative methods of theism versus naturalism. If theistic and naturalistic cumulative cases rely on a problematic view of Bayesianism, then we need to reassess both sides of the debate. It follows that how well theism and naturalism can satisfy proposed criteria of theory choice, such as simplicity, is not directly relevant to their relative prior probabilities when those simplicities are measured in the absence of potential background explanations. Their prior probabilities are a function of their probabilities conditional on conjunctions of higher order theories. These conditional probabilities may partially be a function of the simplicity of theism and naturalism relative to these conjunctions. But in this case, what matters is not how simple the two theories are unconditionally, but how simple they are when we assume the truth of particular higher order theories.